Hey, where's the puppies? Where's the puppies? Hi. <laughs> there you are. There you are. Yeah. Trying to find the puppies in the midst of all the toys. <laughs> Parker's Pockets. Yeah, they are five weeks old. Look at you. Look at you. Hi. What you thinking? What you thinking, huh? Can you talk to me? Who wants to talk? No? Nobody's going to talk? Greeny, you usually talk to me. Oh, is that how it is, huh? Yeah, so... We're almost there, guys. We're almost a puppy picking day. So exciting. Look, now he's excited. The tale tells all. So week five, they just turned week oh, uh, five weeks old on Monday, which means there will be temperament testing over the weekend for this litter. And all of that will be emailed to you guys. And then we'll go ahead and dive into puppy picking. What do you think about that? Yeah. <laughs> so make sure you guys are um, checking in on the weekly update at uh, minigoldendoodlemonthly.com. And there is a link in the description below. And that'll let you know um, just kind of what they're going through. Also, your welcome letter is what you're going to want to be looking at for picking times and things like that. This is a small letter, so I can send out a an early reminder. I usually do send out reminders the week before or the week of so that everybody is ready to go. We don't want anyone to miss their time. I know I had somebody ask me recently, what happens if someone misses their time? And you know what? It has happened once. Once we had someone who went on vacation and completely forgot. And so um, I did have to um, skip them. And uh, when they did go ahead and call, they did end up getting their choice that they had wanted anyway but still um i will definitely call text all that kind of stuff but i i try to make sure everybody has a reminder do you hear the airplane do you hear that are you going to sleep no no buddy no we gotta play we gotta play yeah come here everybody come over here so oh my goodness they um look at the belly they are eating regular food. We are at the beginning of the weaning process for them. Um, because they're five weeks old, they will be weaned at six weeks old. So we have one more week, but they're eating hard kibble. And shall we show our tiki's? Can we show tiki? Whoa, there we go. Little baby teeth. So you can see we're starting to chew. We're eating hard kibble. Um, now, just because there are little guys, they still get some gruel at this time. Even if uh, mama goes away, we still do some gruel because we want to make sure they have plenty, especially for the little ones. We don't want them to go through any kind of undue stress. Um, so yeah, we're getting ready to move Parker next week out of the nursery. And uh, that's when our crate training starts. That's when our um, potty training starts, all of that. Well, potty training starts at two weeks old, but that's when we really dig in there. Um, <laughs> she really likes being behind these pillows. Look at you, pink collar I'm talking about. Hi, I'm always finding you behind the pillows. Yes, I am. Peekaboo. Hi, buddy. Hi, baby. All right, we'll let you stay there for a minute. So, um... When we do our crate training, we put them in two at a time. Of course, this is an uneven litter, so we'll do three and twos, and uh, or three and two, and make sure that everybody has a buddy so they're not alone. We don't wanna make it a stressful situation. 
the crate is one of those things we kind of ease into here so that they have somebody that they're able to be with, play with, and um, they have a buddy until they're completely settled in that crate. And then we'll go ahead and put them by themselves. We don't want them to necessarily be, you know, cold turkey on that. So we will start that process. And once they move by themselves, then I can let you know how they're doing. We really don't have crying when they're with a buddy, but once they move by themselves, then I can kind of gauge who's going to have a hard time and who needs a little more in-depth training. That um, in-depth training to me is either, either um, I move them to an area that doesn't bother anyone, like my um, bedroom or something like that, or we just kind of work with them a little more on that to make sure that they're ready when they go home. Of course, when they go home, you could have a few minutes of crying. Um, some of the dogs that have a little harder time with crate training, you might you might have an up to 45 minutes or so crying. Um, even if they've done fine here, they're in a new place, the new smells, new sights, new schedule. I always tell our owners, especially if you're traveling, don't plan on doing crate training that first night. Have them out in their area with a really nice bed, when I say nice, comfy bed, or a comfy blankie. Um, you can even leave the door to the crate open. Where are you? I've got one behind me hiding. Here we go. Um, and just let them be out in their area that first night. And then you can go ahead and, and do crate training the next night, especially if you're traveling. They're going to be sleeping most of the day. They're going to be a little off schedule. And so, yeah, crate training to me is kind of pointless the first night. But um, I understand if puppy is in the new area, new sights, new sounds, new smells, and they're going to be like, um, you know, just kind of letting you know, hey, I want to be with you. You held me the whole way home. I want to be with you. If you go and you even shush them or console them in the middle of all that, they're just going to, they're smart enough. They're going to realize, hey, that's all I need to do is cry for 45 minutes and they come and get me and that's my ticket out of here. So um, it's not mean. They're crazy when they're here is a safe space. It's a comfy space. It's a space they're familiar with and it's a space that they're generally quiet in. And so um, it's for naps in, in nighttime. And if, um, if you go and console them, if you go and check on them all the time, then you're gonna kind of take an extra route, extra long trip to that crate training process. So we are giving you crate training procedures that we follow, that we um, give you some heads up on. And if you follow that, then you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. Um, now, there are some people that obviously aren't gonna be able to do naps at home. And that's just gonna be just a little longer in the potty training, not necessarily crate training, but in potty training. Just having them in the crate at nighttime is, um, is a big deal. And that will go ahead and help them. But they start that here. Um, people that pick up their puppies, your puppy will um, go home in the crate they've been training in. So that is their crate. People that are flying, you have a choice between a soft carrier, the one that is on the airplane that you can keep, or I can send you a hard carrier. It won't be the exact one they're going to be sleeping in because I need that here for them, but it will be the exact same kind. So um, they're familiar with it and it's not going to be anything different for them. So We'll ask you which one of those options you want. If you want both, then just let me know. And um, whoops, whoopsies, pumpkin. Uh, we'll just go ahead and, and um, add that onto your invoice if you want an extra crate. Where are you going, baby? So let's look at these guys. Purple is over there. I'm gonna have to go get her. Okay, I got purple. Sorry, with my back. You guys don't wanna see me have to try to go over there. Okay, I'm gonna go through everybody uh, after all that yakking. This is Purple Collar Girl and she is a peanut butter. And she is little, but um, she likes to eat. So she's got a little bit of a belly on there, but she's not that tall. So say, I'm a little girl. She is a wavy coat and she is sweet and laid back. That doesn't mean she's not gonna play, but she's a little more laid back. And then we have our little sweetie Petey here. He is really the smallest of the litter. Um, he's kind of showing like he's getting a little longer legs, but um, he is the only curly. 
and he has a little bit of fleece, not a lot, but a little bit of fleece in there. So he's gonna be a little more curly. He is a light red or a peanut butter. I don't know if you can see them together, but he's just, a, she's got a little more of a orangey apricot hue to her. And he's just got that, that typical peanut butter look, but still very dark. Little girl, <laughs> little turquoise girl. Um, she is actually weighing lighter than anybody right now. At first, I wasn't quite sure how she and Greeny would be because they're kind of twins, except she's just a little darker. But he um, he's definitely weighing more than she is right now. So he's a little, a little more, still a little guy, but weighing more. Both of them have a wavy coat, soft cotton wavy coat. And he is gonna be your apricot color. Let's put you next to everybody. We can see all those differences in colors. Come here, turquoise. I wonder if I can squeak a toy and get you over here. Can you come here so we can see you? She's talking about it. Let me discuss this with myself. Come on. Come here. Come here. You gonna talk to us? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Come see me. Come see me. She's not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. See, we are not performing dogs here. Okay, who is behind me? Pinky. All right, we'll go back to turquoise in just a minute. Oh, there we go. All right, dark pink is a dark red, and she's also a soft cotton wavy coat. Where are you going? Where are you going? You wanna go back into the pillows? She, Jessica's in here trying to get turquoise for me. There you are, thank you, Jessica. <laughs> she scaled the wall and everything for us. Here's turquoise. Okay, so I'm gonna put her next to green collar boy, and you can see he's lighter. He's definitely got that, that creamy apricot tone to him. Definitely gonna be lighter. And she has more of a, there's a light undercoating, but a little bit of a peanut butter on top there. Um, it has been said that some of our Parker Paddington puppies that go home end up turning darker. And I will attest to this in a couple of our, some of our dogs that we've kept here, like Ethel. Ethel used to be this light color and she turned dark, dark red. Here we are. I do believe Turquoise's ears are gonna stay dark. What do you think? What do you think? She likes to just go and play, be on a walkabout. But she's definitely lighter. I would say, yeah, she and little black collar boy here, they're gonna be comparable in size and weight, the two of them. So they're our littlest ones. And next, is gonna look smaller is, is purple, but she's still chunky monkey. So the weight might be there just because she likes to eat. Thanks, Jess. And then of course we have um, <laughs> the one that <laughs> keeps hiding behind me and I don't know why, cause she's not, she's not a shy pumpkin, is pink girl. And then our, our green collar boy. I think he's probably gonna weigh I don't know, he and, he and Pink, I think, are really, really close. I mean, we're probably talking just a few ounces difference, but you can see the color difference there. Yeah, what are you all thinking, huh? What are you all thinking? So I think uh, temperament testing and crate training and weaning, those are our big top things that are happening. A lot is happening at one time, but we prepare for it. We ease into it. It's not a, a sudden move or sudden change that we make. Hi. <laughs> what do you think? Can you talk to me? Can you? She's not really vocal. I think Greeny was a little vocal last time, but you're not even talking this time. No, nope, you're all just playing. Oh, there we're going with the licking again. Yeah, hi, baby. Hi, little girl. Sorry, guys, I'm yawning. It's Tuesday. 
Tuesday's the new Monday. Yeah, for me, that's when everything is like, oh my goodness, is it just Tuesday? It's just Tuesday. <laughs> hey, babies. Hey, babies. So this is when I feel like they're the most fun. When they're not um, chewing on my toes and fingers just yet. But they're able to play and their little personalities are coming out. That to me is the most fun. By next week, they're going to be biting on my toes and my fingers. Yes, you will. You just wait and see. That's what you're going to do to me. <gasps> Come here, turquoise. What are you doing? Come here, baby. Come here. Did you smudge the camera? Did you? Yeah. All right, let's look at the toys. <laughs> what? What do you think? Bless you. Oh, who's that at the door? Which mama is at the door, huh? I hear you. Are you talking to us this time around? Yeah, hi. Come here, turquoise. I know you're jealous. I know. I can hear you too. Come on. Come on. So for those that have chosen our extended stay for the holidays, I uh, just want to touch on a few things that we're going to continue doing. Um, while your puppy is here for the few weeks that they're here, we're going to continue the crate training, continue the potty training, bell training, so that they are used to that. Of course, you're going to have to show them where you want them to go at your place when they get home. So you're going to have another few weeks of kind of reinforcing that to make sure that it really sets in. And then, um, of course, crate training by the time they get home, they'll be able to sleep through the night. So that's an added something there. And then we're gonna start our um, our leash training so that they're familiar with the leash. People are often asking me, what do we do? They're chewing on the leash. Well, that's normal. Um, you know, you really can't force these things. So what I like to do is put a light leash on them, one of the shorter ones, maybe a, a, a four foot, and just let them walk around the house or the yard with that leash. They're gonna trip on it themselves, step on it. It'll kind of tug at them and that's just fine. They'll get used to that tugging. They'll chew on it, they'll roll around, bite it, all that kind of stuff. And that's just fine. That is the introductory phase. And so um, for those of you who are wondering, how do we do that? That's how we started here. Look, you're already trying this. Let's look at your teeth. Shall we try looking at, yeah, look at those chompers. Say, yeah, I'm getting the kibble in. That's why the tummy's so big. Yes, you're getting that kibble in. I mean, they act like such big babies right here. But you're still little babies, aren't you? I honestly don't know what I have on my hand that you guys are interested in. I don't remember eating anything. Oh, well. Unless I smell like the babies. Do you smell the babies? Yeah. So, um, look at Purple's over here. She's down. She's down. Come here, girl. Oh, come here. You can sit with me. Here you go. There you go, pumpkin. Um, also, while they're doing their extended stay, you'll be getting the second set of shots, which in, is the, basically revaccinating the first set of shots and then adding your Bordetella and leptospirosis. Especially if you're here in Texas, um, leptospirosis is something... Um, here in Texas, especially the Dallas area, that has kind of made a comeback. Um, that is, um, it can be fatal. So something that we definitely want to go ahead and vaccinate for. We do pay extra attention when we do give this vaccination because it's pretty common um, for puppies to have a reaction to it. And so, um, and if they're allergic to it, we'll see a reaction. So we do like to watch them for about 30 minutes or so after giving the shot, um, make sure they're doing okay. One thing I always tell people to do that are taking home our puppies is, um, it's always a good idea to have some children's liquid Benadryl on hand and a little syringe to administer it that has milliliters on it. Um, it can also say CCs. So when your puppy goes home, I'll let you know if there is a, an allergic reaction or something like that, how much you can give them that is something that will buy you some time to get to a vet. It's not 
instead of a vet, it's something what you can do until you get to a vet. Um, it, it oftentimes, if they're allergic to something, then they're gonna have to administer something else there when you get to the vet. But just some things to have on hand. I mean, it's like having human children. You have to be prepared for some of those scenarios. And um, who's behind me? Granny's behind me now. Yeah, are you tickling my back? Are you? I felt you back there, yes. You're so sweet. Yes, you are. Okay, puppy picking, guys. I will um, go ahead and, and do a reminder for you. And on the day of picking, I will be messaging everybody, letting you know who's been chosen so you know um, who is remaining in the picks. The first pick um, is going to be this little girl right here. So we'll just forget about her. And we'll look at these babies here. So as soon as the second pick lets me know their choice, I'll let everybody know. And then it's just uh, basically like dominoes at that point. Everybody kind of has their, their first choices in mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear you now. Yes, I can. And I tell people with the pockets, they're just like a big golden doodle, just in a little body. So you just treat them the same. Yeah. They just want to play with you. They just want to be with you. She's down. She's down, guys. All right. I'm going to let you guys go. We will see you next week. By that time, you'll be ready for your puppy picking. Can you say goodbye? Say goodbye for us. Yeah. Everybody say bye-bye. You guys are so sweet. Yes, you are. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you next week.